And the only power we have to take on corporate America is union power. Back to our team coverage tonight of presidential candidate Joe Biden's visit here to West Toledo. This comes as a survey show a very close race here in Battleground, Ohio, between President Trump and Joe Biden. It is a state the Trump campaign handily won in 2016. A new CBS News Battleground tracker poll shows President Trump with 50 percent and Joe Biden with 49 percent right now in the state. It is also a Biden's first visit visit to Ohio since September 30th, and he's also infused a lot of advertising money in the last several days here in Ohio. This was a drive in rally during which a few dozen supporters sat in their cars, listened to the vice president, honked their horns as he praised organized labor and auto workers. I also met with the former vice president for several minutes, during which I asked about automotive jobs specifically. What about the auto jobs? You pledged to create one million good paying auto jobs. How do you plan to do that during a pandemic? Well, it's going to take a little bit to do it. And what we're going to do is, for example, we're going to make sure that we install 500,000 charging stations on our highways and the green highways we're going to be building, which are above the floodplains and like. And we're going to make sure that we have, are able to, the, as President of the United States, I'll have control of one of the largest auto fleets in the world. We're going to move those towards electric vehicles. China is now stealing the electric vehicle market. It's estimated that if we are able to make the investments we want to make in electric vehicles, we'll create a million new automobile jobs. They're not my estimates. They're Wall Street estimates. Now, the Trump campaign mocked Biden for traveling to Ohio for what it calls just a handful of supporters, saying that he wasted valuable time on the campaign trail visiting this area with just a few weeks to go. We also put a call out for viewer questions. We got 1,500 responses. And coming up at 6 tonight, you'll hear exactly what the former vice president had to say about job creation, the middle class, and taxes. You can also see my full interview with Joe Biden right right now on YouTube. Now, talking about this rally here in front of his supporters specifically, Joe Biden talked for a little more than 25 minutes to this crowd at the UAW Local 14 here in West Toledo. People turned on their car radios to 98.5 to listen to Biden tell them why he should be our next president. You could hear honks and cheers when he spoke about restoring the auto worker in America, cutting taxes for those who make less than $400,000 and supporting union workers. He was introduced by Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich and Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Well, anytime a candidate makes a campaign speech, he or she offers promises and talks about their platform. Lead investigator Brian Duggar joins us tonight. We asked him to fact check a few of the vice president's statements. He said his plan would create more jobs than the president's. Brian, what can you tell us about this? Well, Vice President Biden was referring to a Moody's Analytics report, which indicated that his plan would create 18.6 million jobs versus 11.2 million for the president. Now, what he left out is that these numbers assume that Biden wins and Democrats control both houses of Congress. Um, if the power is divided, we're talking about much different, much closer numbers. You know, so how does he plan on doing this? Well, you know, the study says he's going to raise taxes on people making $400,000 or more. And he's also going to raise the corporate income tax from 21% to 28%. Now, this is going to generate trillions of dollars in revenue, which he plans on investing in infrastructure, education, other areas that create jobs. But if you are one of those people that has a lot of money in the stock market, this is also going to eat into corporate profits, which typically isn't good news for the stock market. Well, Brian, uh, Vice President Biden also attacked the president's job creation, considering we're in the middle of a pandemic. Is that really fair? Well, that's a good question. And what he was referring to, he said if President Trump loses, that he will be the first president since Herbert Hoover to actually lose jobs while in Congress, while in office. And as, as you mentioned, I mean, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And if you look at, at the end of 2019, President Trump had created nearly 7 million jobs. 
once February, March, April came along, we lost 22 million jobs. And, you know, since then, we've gained about half of those back. But at this point, yes, it would be a true statement. He would definitely lose jobs by the time he left office. Brian Duggar, thanks so much. I know there is so much information on both sides of the campaign, and we'll continue to fact check with you the last few weeks of this election. Now, a lot of people came out here to West Toledo, both supporters and those against the president and a vice president. Let's talk right now with Amy Steigerwald, who caught up with Biden's supporters. Amy. Yeah, Mel, many of the Biden supporters I spoke with today tell me they specifically came here because they are concerned about what President Trump has done with the office of the presidency over the past four years. They're hoping this election takes a different direction. I'm really afraid of the directions that our country is going. Supporters of former Vice President Joe Biden lined up outside Local 14 to show their support. Oh, yeah. While a large portion of the crowd consisted of President Trump supporters, those voting for Biden this election are concerned about the policies the president has put in place. Our loss of freedoms, about the, the policies that are going to affect women, about health care. The big supporter of Biden, I think uh, Trump has been a disaster for the past uh, four years. And I'm, I just can't sit home. I have to speak up. In his speech, Biden focused on job creation here in Ohio, specifically in manufacturing, which is something his supporters want to see. Well, they've got to bring they've got to bring work back to this country. Now, Mel, one of the interesting things this afternoon, up until former Vice President Joe Biden came here to the local 14 hall and up through his speech, there were both Trump and Biden supporters outside the hall. Uh, they started on different sides of the sidewalk, but eventually kind of intermingled and were going back and forth on a couple policies and issues. So definitely a big crowd on both sides here this afternoon. Um, and it was an interesting to see the way that they interacted. Live in West Toledo, Amy Sagerwald, W. TOL 11. I can attest to that, Amy. We were getting ready for our live shots out here tonight, and one of the workers stopped by to call us fake news. Speaking of that, uh, John Monk caught up with some of the protesters, those against Joe Biden. He is at the Early Vote Center tonight. John, who did you talk to, and what did they tell you? Yeah, Melissa, uh, starting this morning, we weren't even sure if there were going to be any opposition protesters coming out to the Joe Biden event. But over the period of about an hour before uh, the former vice president showed up, a bunch of Trump supporters came out of the woodwork and uh, showed their support openly for the incumbent president. A handful of those protesters said they themselves were union workers who were not voting for Biden, but voting for President Trump. During his speech today, Joe Biden claimed that President Trump broke promises to American workers, citing the closing of the Lordstown plant. Biden also went on saying that President Trump has more interest in the stock market than the average American. Lucas County Republican uh, Party spokesperson Josh Colleen says President Trump actually replaced NAFTA with something better for the Toledo auto worker, which Colleen says is something that the Democrats, including Joe Biden, have said they were going to do for years. So I find it interesting that he would come here and say that President Trump is not standing up for auto workers and the working class when we've seen that not just through trade deals, but uh, tax cuts um, and other policies he's pursuing uh, on trade and other uh, areas to support workers. And Biden, he, we lost too many jobs when he was in there. 47 years, we lost so many jobs. over When he was in office for four year, eight years with Obama, we lost 700,000 manufacturing jobs. Trump brought back the 250, 300,000. And we'll be live here at 6 with more on uh, Joe Biden's presidential campaign stop and the Republican response, including what local Republicans have to say about Joe Biden's late arrival to Northwest Ohio this late on the campaign trail. For now, reporting live in downtown Toledo, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11.
All right, thank you so much, John. And back to President Trump. He is back on the campaign trail tonight, making a stop in Orlando, Florida for a rally. He told supporters last night he is recovered from the coronavirus and all ready to go. That's despite the White House or his doctors confirming that he's tested negative for the virus. And when he tweeted yesterday that he is immune from COVID-19 and cannot spread the virus, Twitter flagged that statement as misleading and potentially harmful. It's very difficult to know if someone is infectious or not with the current tests. We still need better and more appropriate testing in the country. Now, there are reports that the president has asked his campaign to put him on the road every day between now and November 3rd, and that his team is working on a schedule to make that happen. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence made stops in Ohio, and he will be in Michigan this week. He was in Columbus today for a Make America Great Again event, and he'll be in Grand Rapids, Michigan Wednesday. The vice president visited Ohio last month and Michigan in August. We have much, much more from uh, the vice president's campaign campaign stop here in West Toledo tonight. Dan, for now, I'll send it back to you. Melissa, with Ohio being a swing state, this isn't the last we'll hear from these candidates. Thank you very much.